welcome. Uh, in the previous video, which I'll link in the description, uh, we were talking about simple random walks and uh, the probability of hitting a certain value, prob hitting probabilities. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about hitting times. So um, the expected time. We, we, in the previous video, we solved how you know we can find we showed we can find the probability of hitting a certain value for a simple random walk. Now we're going to think about how long it takes to hit a certain value. Um, so I've drawn a simple random walk here, but uh, we're not going to, we introduced kind of what a simple random walk is in the, in the last video. We're just going to go right ahead and get into um, the hitting times in this video, in, in this video. So we're going to call uh, time tk uh, as the time that x hits k. Okay, so k could equal 10 or 15 and uh, t sub k is just however, you know, the, the time it takes for x to hit that value. And I should say x sub t. I should make it clear that this is a capital x. Uh, this is the stochastic process, um, x sub t. You know, the t sub k is a random variable itself, right? Like, um, you know, we can think of like running a simple random walk a bunch of times, and each time we have kind of a different value, the, the time that it takes to hit, maybe hits three hits, seven hits, 15 hits, whatever. Um, t is, is greater than zero, um, especially if, actually t is greater than k, I guess, but we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a second. Um, and we are concerned with the expected value of tk, tk is the expected value, expected value of, of t sub k, so the expected amount of time it takes us to hit k, basically. Um, and similar to the previous video, video, we can kind of think of getting up to level k as getting to level one a bunch of times, right? So to get to step five, we basically have to get to step one, we have to do that five times. So the way we can break out expected value of t to the k is we can just say that's the same as the expected value of, of t one, which is the expected amount of time it takes to get to step one, plus e of t one, plus dot, 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 uh, a, sorry, plus e of, T1, and I'm, I'm going to have uh, K of these terms, right? Because I get to 1, then I get another one, then I get, you know, I get all the way up to, to K, and the, the intervals are independent, so it, it's kind of okay to, um, to think about this. And, you know, if I just want to simplify this, it's K T1, right? And what's really nice is that um, E, just like in the last video with probability, Expected value of t1 is way easier to find than expected value of tk. Okay, so we're actually gonna, you know, if, if you're just coming from the last video, we're gonna do a very similar approach. So uh, expected value of t1, we're gonna condition on the first step. So first step analysis, and say what, you know, based on what happened in the first step, um, you know, we can, we can kind of break the world into two pieces, probability weighted by, you know, what those worlds are, and then think of the expected value of, of, of hitting one based on those two outcomes. So um, it's slightly different. So uh, we're going to condition on the first step, which means we've already taken one step, which means automatically um, we have to put a one in here. So we have one plus because we've already taken the first step. And we're conditioned on that, and um, um, we, we kind of know that's already occurred. So we have probability p. I should put up here probability p. We have, we have probability p of going up right on the first step from zero, right? So probability p. Um, and if we go if we go up on the first step from zero, right, our new expected value of the time it takes to go to step one is just going to be zero because we you know we we've already reached we've already reached step one. So probability p that our expected wait time is now zero. So that this term just takes a step. And then uh, we have probability q. We you know q is one minus p. I need to write that, but we just can't use that for shorthand. So we have probability Q of going down. Um, so down a step to negative one, and then we have to go um, up two steps to get to get back to one, right? So it, it, this now, we now have the expected value of P2, right? We're, we basically went down a step, and now we have to go up to, to zero and then to one. So we need the expected value of the time it hits to hit, the time it takes to hit two. Um, and we can use this formula, the expected value of T sub K equals K, expected value of T sub one, <coughs> Plugging in two for k, this just becomes uh, one, and we can get a uh, two for k. So I put the two up and put up here. So I basically just took the two, put it up here. You know, it, it's it's 
takes two of uh, two single steps to get to the two steps overall. So, um, so we get this nice. Uh, I'll just write it out without that uh, zero term. Two plus one. And now um, we have two quantities that we, you know, we're solving for expected value of t sub one. Everything in this equation, other than expected value of t sub one, is a constant. So now we can solve for expected value of t sub one, um, which is which is really neat. Um, so first, we're going to do kind of a funky case. We're going to do the case. Uh, maybe let's do it. Make sure this is good. We're going to do the case where um, p equals q equals one half. So p is one half, q is one half. It's a symmetric random walk. Could go up or down. It gives you probability. Um, so if we plug in one half, two equals one half of this. This just becomes one. Two times one half is one. So we get expected value of p sub one equals one plus expected value of p sub one. Make sure that's the right thing. So. <clears throat> So that's kind of weird. We see expected value t sub one is one plus expected value t sub one. That's like writing x equals one plus x. That's kind of weird. If I subtracted the expected value t sub one from both sides, I get zero equals one. That's incorrect. So what our answer here is actually, and this is really funky, but what our answer is is expected value of t sub one equals infinity. Um, and this, you know, you can kind of convince yourself that this works because infinity. Is the same as one plus infinity. One plus infinity is still infinity. So um, this seems kind of weird. The expected value of getting to one, like one is just one step away. One is just one step away from zero. Like that's the, the little door stop where I just kicked it. Um, one is just one step away from zero. So why is it ex an expect? Why does it, we expect on average it will take? You know, what, why on average will it take infinity time to get to one step above zero? It's just one step away. Um, well, to think about that is obviously in, in half the cases, it's just going to take one step to get to one, right? Um, and most of the time, even if you drift down a little bit here, eventually the symmetric random walk will bounce up and hit one. However, there are cases where it will take an infinite amount of time, you know, and thinking about infinity is, is not really the, the purpose of this type of stuff. But, but there, are, there are some cases where it will take an infinite amount of time where the Random walk gets far enough away from one down, you know, down here. Or however, it'll take an infinite amount of time, and because there's some cases where it will take an infinite amount of time, the expected value is infinite, and that's kind of weird because you have most of the cases are a very finite, you know, small amount of time. Half the cases are are one, but if you throw one infinity in there, everything kind of becomes infinity. So that's kind of a you know not super mathematically sound, more kind of an intuitive. Um, explanation for that, but that's why we see this really weird result um, of when when um, p and q are one half. When does a symmetric random walk we get expected value of t uh, equals infinity? So really weird. Um, let's return to the case most cases where uh, p and q are not equal to one half. So um, now we don't get this weird x equals that one plus x. Um, let's just go ahead and solve for um, expected value t sub one. So I'm going to subtract from both sides. I'm going to subtract the 2q, um, and I'm going to get, uh, so I'm going, to, I'm going to factor out. So I'm going to get expected, well, I'll basically do I'm subtracting the 2q, et plus 1, and then I'm going to factor out the et plus 1, et sub 1, getting 1 minus 2q, um, q, et sub 1, equals 1. Okay? So I just moved over the uh, 2q, et sub 1, factored out the t sub 1, and, and I get this, and then it's just an easy division. And uh, we don't have time in this video to simplify this, but I, I promise you, if you expand 1 minus 2q, if you plug in 1 minus p, this is like good arithmetic exercise, if you plug in 1 minus p, to this, so 1 minus 2 times 1 minus p, you're going to get uh, p minus q. It's going to simplify 1 minus p, p minus q. So again, we're not going to show it here just because we don't have that much time. Check it for yourself, I, I promise it works out. Okay, 1 over p minus q. So that's pretty cool. We get, like, we've, already, you know, we've solved expected value of t sub 1. That's the amount of time we expect it to, to hit 1. Um, however, uh, maybe the 
um, kind of sharp-eyed among you have noticed, uh, if p is less than q, this is going to be negative. Right? We're going to have p minus a greater value, negative. We get a negative expected value. That doesn't really make sense. That doesn't seem to work. Um, and that's so in the case where in the case where p is less than one half, so p less than one half, whatever, um, you know, it's going to be less than q. In that case, the expected value comes out as negative. That doesn't make sense, but that's a similar result to the result we got over here. Remember, in the previous video, we saw that if p is less than one half, um, there's a uh, if p is less than one half, there is a non-zero probability that we never hit. The, the value, right? It, we, I think the probability is p over q, you know, so if p is less than one half, there's, there's a chance that we never ever hit one, which means we will be waiting an infinite amount of time to hit one, because we're never going to hit it, ergo, because at least some of the, you know, at least some of the possible outcomes are infinite, this expected value is going to be infinite. Um, and that makes a little bit more sense, like, there's a chance we never hit it, there's a chance we're waiting an infinite amount of time, so the average is, is the expected value is going to be infinite. Um, however, when p is greater than one half, um, this is the theorem we could just write it with this in case when p is greater than one half, we get this this nice result. Um, and again, like we found expected value of t sub one, we can easily just plug in. We can just easily make this k by using uh, this formula above. Expected value of t sub k is k times expected value of t sub one. Just multiply the right hand side by k, and we get k over t minus two. Um, so yeah. We, another very similar derivation, we can look at some <clears throat> intuition on this term. The larger that k is, the larger the expected value is, the larger, the more time. If k is higher, we expect it to take longer to hit, which totally makes sense. Um, uh, the bigger that p is, right? If p is larger, this denominator is smaller, which means we're waiting less time. We're expecting to wait less time to hit k, which also totally makes sense. Because um, if, if p is larger, we should hit there quicker. And note that, uh, in, you know, in this case, remember, we saw when p is greater than 1 half, we're guaranteed to hit, uh, you know, any value k at some point. So that's why we don't have infinity in this case, because we know we're going to hit it. Um, the expected value is, is finite. It's not infinite. We have, you know, this value. It can be very large. Like, if p is just barely greater than 1 half, and, you know, if k is really big, we can be waiting a long time, but we do have a finite expected value. And as usual, um, I didn't write this again. It's my fault. Uh, this is considering k is greater than zero. We can also think of k being less than zero. It's totally symmetric if we just flip it. You can switch the p's and q's if you wanted, um, or you know you can just imagine the whatever you're looking at on the flipped axis. But this is for k uh, larger than zero. Uh, so yeah, hopefully uh, that explains your questions uh, in terms of hitting times for random walks. We'll see you in the next video.